Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create a typewriter effect in DaVinci Resolve. As usual, I created a template to make things easier and more convenient. The template comes with customizable features, including a blinking cursor and different typing directions. With these dynamic settings, adding unique typewriter animations to show titles and captions becomes not only easy, but also exciting to unleash your creativity. To create a typewriter effect, we first add the text plus clip to the timeline. Change the text, say typewriter. Change the font, style, size if needed. We can use the write-on parameter to create simple write-on and write-off effects. When transitioning the end value from 0 to 1, it writes on the letters one by one until all characters are displayed. We can keyframe the end value to create a write-on animation effect. Move the playhead one second forward from the beginning, mark a keyframe for write-on parameter, change the end value to 0. Move forward two more seconds, change the value to 1. This automatically creates a new keyframe at the current position. That's it, we now have a write-on animation, it's basically a typewriter effect, but without a cursor. To make the typing effect faster, we can shorten the duration between the two keyframes. Go to the first keyframe, press shift right key to move forward one second, change the end value to 1. A new keyframe is added automatically. Now we can go to the next keyframe and delete the keyframe as it's no longer needed. The typing animation is now running faster. All letters are displayed within one second. Adding a cursor to the effect is a bit tricky. We will have to do that in the Fusion page. It needs some calculation to determine the cursor position as the letters are dynamically displayed on the screen. Open the text plus clip in the Fusion page. The template node is basically a Fusion text plus node. It's currently named template, let's rename it to text1 for clarity. Add a background node to the editor. While it's selected, click the rectangle button in the toolbar. This automatically connects a rectangle mask to the background node. Merge the background output with the output of the text node. Select the background, change the color to white. Select the rectangle node, change the size in the viewer to create a cursor in the form of a vertical line. OK, now we have a white cursor ready for animation. In the inspector, right-click the center parameter, choose expression to enable the simple expression input field. Modify the expression as shown here on the screen. I also put the expression in the description below, you can copy from there. The data window consists of four values, with the first two representing the bottom left corner and the other two representing the top right corner. If you are interested to see the actual values stored in the data window, you can add a text node to the editor. Modify the text with a simple expression shown here. Drag it to the left side viewer. These are the values stored in the data window property. Now, the cursor moves along with the appearing letters. And we can also check the data window values in the left side viewer. The animation looks good, but the cursor is too close to the text. Change the expression by adding a bit extra space between the text and the cursor. This works well as it begins typing the letters. However, before frame 30, when no character is displayed, the cursor also disappears. This happens because when nothing is displayed for the text, the expression returns a negative value, causing the cursor to move off screen. In this case, as we can see in the left viewer, the data window returns all negative values to indicate that nothing is shown for the text. 
To address this issue, copy the text node. Click on the background of the node editor to ensure nothing is selected. Press Ctrl Shift V or right click to paste an instance of the text node. Rename the instance to text2. Nothing happened because we already have a node called text2. Let's rename it to text3. Go to the inspector, right click the write on parameter, D instance. Double click to reset the parameter. So the text3 node will always be fully displayed. Select the rectangle node. Modify the cursor position expression by adding a condition to handle cases when the value is less than zero. When data window returns negative values, it will use the coordinates of the bottom left corner of text 3. Now the cursor displays at the right place even before the animation starts. All right, now the only thing left is to make the cursor blink. Select the Merge node, go to the Inspector. Modify the Blend parameter with a simple expression like this. When it's not in the middle of typing animation, which is before the type begins or after the typing is done, this expression makes the cursor blink every 6 frames. Otherwise, during the animation, it sets the Blend parameter to 1, ensuring the cursor is always visible. If you prefer a slower pace, you can change the 6 to a larger number, say 10. OK, that's how we create a typewriter effect with a blinking cursor in the Fusion page. If you find it a bit involved, no worries. You can download the Essential Typewriter template and use it directly in the Edit page. As always, you can find the download link in the description below. Installation is simple. Just double-click the DRFX file and follow the instructions. Once the template is installed, you can drag it from the effects panel to the timeline. There are three groups of parameters in the inspector. You can change the title and styles using these ones in the first section. For the demo, let's change the title to my first title. Change the font to something like from a typewriter, Korean U looks good. Adjust the size if needed. Use the tracking option to increase or decrease the space between characters. The next group is used to manage cursor styles. By default, it's set to a vertical orange line. There are four predefined cursor styles, you can change them quickly by clicking these buttons. Depending on the font it's using, the cursor may not align with the title. For example, select the block cursor, it's a bit off the baseline. If we change to the default font, it's good. But for this Korea new font, it's not aligned as I would expect. In this case, you can adjust the height to align the cursor. Or move down the cursor using the offset parameter. Now, the cursor is aligned and looks good. If you prefer a block cursor with rounded corners, you can increase the corner radius. You can also adjust the cursor angle. And change the color according to your preference. After setting the title and cursor styles, you can customize the typewriter effect by adjusting these parameters within the animation group. The default effect is centered typing in the middle of the screen. Both the title and cursor move in this mode. Setting the direction to the left mode will push the letters to the left side as the title reveals. and the cursor itself does not move in this mode. As the start position is in the middle, you will need to change the position to center the title. When the direction is set to right, 
the cursor moves to the right, and the title holds its position as the letters are typed out. This represents the most common typing behavior. Once again, adjust the start position to ensure the title is properly displayed on the screen. The delay parameter is used to control when to start the typing. 30 frames is set as the default, which is one second in this case. If you want to start typing letters without delay, set the value to zero. The time parameter determines the duration in frames it takes to type out all the letters in the title. The default setting is 60 frames, equivalent to 2 seconds. If you like it faster, reduce the time, let's say 30 frames. This actually looks better than the 60 frames. The blink rate parameter controls how fast the cursor blinks. It's measured in frames. By default, the cursor blinks every 10 frames. Increasing this value slows down the blinking, while decreasing it speeds up the blinking. Please note that the cursor only blinks before the typing starts and after the typing concludes. To have a solid cursor without blinking, simply set the blink rate to zero. To entirely hide the cursor, simply decrease the width until it disappears. All right, that covers the fundamental use of the essential typewriter effect, straightforward and easy. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Feel free to leave comments with any questions or suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.